beautiful Melbourne. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. Actually, been here since since last week as well. So Melbourne is fantastic. Um, the preparation has been good. Um, as you know, they come in in different days when we're coming to, to Australia from different time zones, different games and such. So Monday we did some position specific work with the, the five players that we had in. Same thing on Tuesday. Wednesday was the first kind of whole team session. We did a defending game plan. We did attacking game plan yesterday. I wasn't too happy with yesterday's session, to be honest. I was a bit frustrated. I think we looked slow and, and a bit flat in our legs and, and no energy, but the players responded really well today. So today, the, the, the pre-training session today was, was gold standards. Just talk to the team that this is the standards that we want in, in training. Unfortunately, we had a couple of knocks in training today because the intensity and, and the competition was really out there. Uh, and unfortunately, we had two knocks. So we have two question marks in the starting lineup for tomorrow that I won't know until tomorrow because of two, two knocks in training today. But that is what it is, and we, we deal with it. Um, other than that, the preparation has been really, really good. Who are the two knocks? I, uh, is Sweden asking, or are you? <laughs> I know. Now I, I don't want to reveal that for now because that might influence uh, Sweden's preparation on, on who is playing. But the, there's two players that um, that is uh, a bit question mark. We had one in the, in the duel and one that blocked the shot on the foot and, and tweaked it a bit. So so she had to step off. So so we'll see we'll see in the morning what that looks like. I'm sorry to not give you the names, but I, I need to, to hold that close to my chest. Anna and Joey. With, uh, when you already aligned, Kennedy wasn't going to be playing any role with her shoulder. Um, is there anyone else like that? Like thinking players like what's in the least Kellen Knight's role? And a Chloe Lagarde, both come up long Good question, and to be clear there, we had a really good communication with, with City, and I'm extremely thankful for the club releasing her, because she's not back in full training, and, and we felt, both the club and us, that we could benefit from getting her in here to see the tactics, the video sessions, get some individual work on, like today she did some separate work individually, because she can't do full contact, but for, for us, just having three camps left until we're going to potentially announce a roster, every day counts, and, and we really appreciate that, that Man City released her. When it comes to KK and Chloe, as you've seen, Chloe hasn't had one single minute with club yet. Uh, she did get those minutes against South Africa. Uh, she still have a, a, a bit to go to be back, but she's coming back to, to Australia now and get game time. Uh, how many minutes she's up for in this camp? She's available because she's training fully, but obviously she needs match minutes to, to be up and running in the tempo of international football. But I was really happy to get on the park against South Africa. So it's not just about minutes, it's about that feeling when you've done such a hard work for such a long time and get on the park again mentally. And you saw how the team got around her as well. So that's the mental tick we got there. KK, uh, I've seen live a lot and she's had a, a couple of 90 minutes and 45s and 60s uh, looking better and better. It's still, like she says herself, she's just happy to be back in right now. And it's a huge step to international football. So we need to have you know, be, be calm and low in the expectations with KK. Yes, be happy that she's back and, and she's working. Same thing with her. She's coming back home and get, get minutes which she, she needs. And KK is not where she was before she got injured, but just the fact that she's back playing football is fantastic. Now it's that step from club to country and we'll see how long it takes before, because she, before she's ready for international football. Um, so coming into this series, you had some positive results and perhaps even more importantly, positive performances in your last series, especially against the Danes' top 20 opposition. How do you go about building on that and taking the lessons from that and implementing it whilst at the same time welcoming back new faces, trying to incorporate them into what worked when they've got their own attributes and strengths and weaknesses? How do you go about that balancing act? Well, I actually told them yesterday that we've said we're going to narrow down and have a little bit more continuity. That doesn't mean spots are guaranteed. So I actually approached the team yesterday and said, you know what, it's it's up to you now to show me whether you want to be part of World Cup roster, but also if you want to be a starter or a game changer. So now there's competitions, and I actually love that. So all the investment that we've done for a very long time now in the depth of the roster, all of a sudden when I have a couple of trainings this week and we work on final third finishing, for example, and you have those two players in the 10 spot, you have those two players in the 11 spot, or you have your left side and then the 10, you know, to work on numbers, sorry if I'm, I'm too uh, terminology with football here, but, and you see the quality in those and you go, you know what, both of them could stop, you know, both of them, and they kind of realise that, hmm, there's some competition for spots now, so that's how I approach it and actually challenge the players to, to show me if they, if they want to play in terms of performance in training, but also in, in club land. I do think that some players in the last camp, when the opportunity was given to it, took it. Uh, and I think a few of those players actually deserve to get a second chance against the top ranked team uh, to take that next step and see where are we. I think we've proven in the last camp, and actually already against, I'm going to go back to Canada, I think we've proven in that second game against Canada, not for a full 90 minutes, but for a half, that with six to seven starters from the Olympic gone, we could still play a really good 
game of football against Canada, which is a top-ranked team. I think we've proven in this camp that we could beat like the second tier, third tier kind of team in the ranking. But now it's the big test. Where are we against the top-ranked team? Because we still have a lot of players unavailable, you know, especially in the back line. There's two to three potential starters that's not available. And we're going to play Sweden, who smashed France 3-0. So it's going to be a tough test. So how do I go about it? I give people that deserve a second chance, a second chance against the top-ranked team. Are they ready for it? We'll see where we're at. I'm curious. Just, just further on that, in terms of that benchmark, and you know, even for fans in Australia to see where the team is at right now, how important is this game tomorrow to, to show people, yourself, the players, and also fans, exactly where the team sits right now? I think internally, we have a pretty clear idea where we're at. Uh, I said it even before the, the Canada Games and during the Canada Games, that internally there had been a belief and patience in this process uh, about preparation, and there had been an understanding why we do what we do. And I think, and again, I want to say this is not to protect me or the team to say we're better than we are, but I think some of the score lines have blinded some people from the performances, like that first half against Canada, for example, which I think was brilliant, but we didn't do it for 90 minutes. Um, I think internally we are curious to see where we're at with a lot of injuries out playing a top ranked team that is one of the best teams in the world where are we we're, we're curious and no matter the score we we'll look to have a really good performance and what we've said is when we go out there we need to be true to who we are we don't care if it's the top ranked team or a second ranked team or third we're going to play the way we do we're going to have an attack mindset and everyone is talking about we need to keep a clean sheet no we need to score more goals than the opponents that's who we are we're a pressing team, we're an attacking team. I said that from day one, that's never going to change. And can we do that against a top-ranked team with a lot of injuries? Or are we going to cough three goals? Well, if we do, we need to score four. That's what we're curious about. Publicly outside, um, I do think that it's still important to create that momentum and the belief for the World Cup. So if we can get a good result as well, I think it's good for the external vibe and the momentum. But I think it's more so important that we have a good performance so that the people can identify themselves with us as a team. Who are we? If we buy a ticket to the look at 90 minutes for the Matildas, they need to understand and, and be guaranteed what they get. That 100% attacking mindset, pressing, you know, that's what they're going to get. Are they going to get the score lines against a world class opposition with injuries? We don't know yet, but they're going to get that type of game for sure. Did you have a follow up? Well, just in terms of, um, you know, you haven't been here for more than three years in Melbourne. Is there a message that you send to the players about being back and, and trying to put on a bit of a performance in some ways? I actually don't need because they are telling me that. <laughs> They're so excited to be here. And the fact that we play in the same state and that we're going to play our final group stage game as well, they want to create that good feel feeling and, and that connection with the fans to say, hey, in less than a year we're going to be here playing against Canada in the last group stage. Let's get a good feeling together and do this and train how we're going to play that game together. Because with a high octane game we play, I, I want to stress that again. There's, they're going to take the legs out of any player. How fit you are, it's going to take the legs of any player. And when you when you play that type of game, the last 30 minutes or last 15, you need the fans to carry them through that, to push through that last kind of when you're a bit tired. So let's do that together tomorrow. Sweden's correct for saying that you guys only um, came together and coached, but just missed out. And obviously he says you're a friend. And he said if you're a friend, he kind of wants to you know, get the win even more. I guess how do you feel about that? Is that kind of how you feel as well? <laughs> Well, what, what I can say is uh, I would have loved to work with Peter back then. We were very close to, to do it. Um, he's a phenomenal coach. Uh, not just him, him, him and Magnus is doing a phenomenal job with, with the Swedish team. Uh, they've had continuity over time. It, it took a while to get the team where they are now, but let's look at that game when they played against France, how, how good they've actually made this team. Look at the tournament's results, semifinals, finals and tournaments. Um, do I want to beat Sweden? Do I want to beat Peter? Of course I do. <laughs> But this is more about the Matildas and Australia versus Sweden than me versus Peter. Do you feel a bit more stressed that it is like your home nation that you're playing? Do you, I mean, does that factor in the game? I guess I haven't gotten used to it. As, this, I, I don't know if it's coincidence, but look at my time in the US as well. The amount of times I've played Sweden in, in tournaments and friendlies, I, it's, yeah, I, I don't know what it is, but I guess I, I, I've just gotten used to it. Um, the best thing though would, you know, in a friendly, in a friendly, but in, in the World Cup, being on, on opposite side of the bracket, I, I would love to play them in the final. <laughs> um, you spoke that there's a couple of question marks over some players. Kennedy's obviously not playing, but you did get a few uh, players back considering the last camp. Are there any big selection headaches for you at the moment, or are you really adopting that curiosity mindset of whoever's there today? No, there's definitely some, um, some big decision and headaches for tonight.
for sure, we coach is going to sit in that coach's room like I always do the night before the game and go through every scenario. If we start this way, who can be a game changer? Because when we have those discussions, we actually spend equally amount of minutes to discuss game changer as we do with the starting lineup because we've seen statistically from experience these games are won and lost the last 30 minutes a lot of times so we need to see who can give us the most from start but who can give us from the bench just look at the last game against Denmark we didn't win the game in the starting lineup we won the game with game changers and then it's classic to say why didn't they start <laughs> but but maybe it's because they didn't start that we actually got that impact so as a coach you're trying to work that sometimes you get it right and sometimes you get it completely wrong and that's our job to try to know the answer before it happens and not after well, like there's i suppose a lot of potential combinations that you could You're actually on to exactly what we discussed right now, because we're not talking about the best player on the park, we're talking about the best chemistry, meaning the best team. Where is those links? Uh, are they playing good together in Clubland? What do they do with us? The one thing that we have been a bit frustrated on, to be honest, is that we haven't been able to have come continuity especially in the back line when it comes to chemistry you know just look at the different back lines we played throughout this last 18 months that that's been a bit frustrating for us uh, we've tried to spend more time then in training to get like when they come into camp and the two of you might play a center back pairing you get every single minute in training to work on that connections that you talk about and then there's other pieces that is as well it's an opposition we play one of the fastest and tallest team in the world uh, they're brutally good in pressing and transitions which needs maybe to affect our starting lineup, and they're extremely good in set place. Us and them have best stats on attacking corner for the last year in international football. How do we defend corners, for example? You know, last game on the play in Denmark, we had the shortest team on the park since I came on board, but also the fastest. So there's things like that as well. You know, how do we match Sweden in, in that sense? Emma. Yeah, so I would like to do some um, questions in Swedish. Ja, cool. Ja. Ja. Tjena. Ja, han, är ju, han har gjort sitt, sitt, sin hemläxa, Peter. Det är faktiskt väldigt mycket likheter kring vart våra spelare spelar. Sorry for speaking Swedish, I translate afterwards. Vart de spelar, hur många spelare spelar i toppklubbar, i toppligan och startar, hur många spelare i damer och svenskar och så vidare. Det är väldigt lika på det sättet. Och sen, de vill gärna pressa väldigt aggressivt, vi vill pressa. De har väldigt bra djupelspel, vi har väldigt bra djupelspel. De är väldigt starka på fasta, vi är väldigt starka på fasta. Så det finns väldigt mycket likhet i det. Så det blir väldigt mycket intressanta matcher i matchen när det gäller den här matchen. Men kan det vara en... Ja, men vi är också två landslag som har väldigt tydlig identitet och är väldigt sanna vår identitet. Och det tror jag är en styrka att man har en väldigt tydlig identitet som landslag. Så på så sätt tror jag inget av lagen kommer göra några stora justeringar utan de här små justeringarna för att anpassa sig till motstånden. Men vi kommer att vara väldigt sanna vilka vi är. Det är jag säker på att Sverige kommer att vara också. De här spelarna har ju långårig erfarenhet av att göra det på ett annat sätt. Och jag måste säga att jag är sjukt imponerad av hur de gör det. Och vårt medicinska team gör ett fantastiskt jobb för det. Och tittar man på träningen idag så finns det definitivt inga trötta huvuden och trötta ben. Tvärtom, de är definitivt förberedda för imorgon. Kanske. Vi får se imorgon. Uh, I translate real quick for okay. respect of the, the people well, here. I, I was going to uh, go. I heard jet lag. Yeah. And I was going to go. So I you was do ready the to go. I was ready to go. Okay, cool. But no, I think you should try. <laughs> Let's see how yeah. you go. Uh, well, the last question was about jet lag, you know, the difference from Sweden and us experienced the, the jet lag and Sweden felt a bit tired and this is the first time, but it's good experience for the World Cup. And, and the question was, do we have an advantage? And I said, maybe we'll see tomorrow. But when it comes to Canada, they show that they could really adjust to that in, in a good way. The other question was about that Sweden coach has said that there's a lot of similarities between the teams, where player plays and the way we play. And I said, if you look at where our players and Swedish players playing, the, we have similar amount of players in top clubs 
in top leagues and in Damasvenskan, but also the identity of the team being a high pressing team that likes to, to go you know hard and forward and fast and, and being good as a place. There's a lot of similarities there. That was kind, kind of the takeaways. We've got time for three more questions. We'll go Anna, Joey, and then one final one from over here. Um, so Sam Kerr, um, we know what she can deliver, but she's not actually scored for the Matildas, um, I think since the New Zealand friendlies, and we know how much of a winner and how hungry she is. I guess, how do you get the goals flying again for her and get her, you know, at her best, like we can, we can see with Chelsea, for example? Yeah. A couple of perspective of that. She wasn't with us in June, as, yeah, as you know, and then she was sick uh, in the last camp, not playing against South Africa, except those last couple of minutes, yes, because it was her club home ground. We put her in there, yes, for that feeling, but she wasn't really ready to play, to be honest. But she said, hey, it's one in a lifetime tournament. Can I get some minutes? <laughs> uh, so she has limited minutes. Same thing with Chelsea, to be honest. She came in after a, a period where she had to have a break, mentally and physically, which she needed, and we knew that's going to influence her form. Uh, and it's not about her being in best form now, it's the World Cup. But what we've seen in Chelsea from having a slow start, not scoring, she's now back at scoring. And if you can be, bring that club form into us as well, that's obviously the, the perfect scenario. Yeah, so I was going to say, do you feel like the, the goal, she's ready to sort of get the goals flowing, she has hit her straps for Chelsea, like coming into this form, maybe ready to make an impact? I actually think that, I think this is an interesting question, because you can see very clearly, and I know Peter, Peter have talked about this as well, where you look at the club performances and then they come into national team and look at, and if you look at some stats back in time, you can see players in form with clubs perform for national teams, players that get a lot of minutes for clubs coming in playing for national teams. So 85 to 90% of the development and players in form is happening in club and then they bring it in there. What I'm pleased about is not just Sam scoring goals now. If you look at our players coming into this camp in the last couple of weeks, we have goals and assists from a lot of players. So that makes me also curious, can they bring that form into the game tomorrow? Then I'm excited. Joey. At least Kellen Knight, you've got her coming back in now, but what sort of role do you see her taking on with this team? You've obviously got Claire Wheeler's emerged in the midfield, Katrina Gorry's been playing very well at that base, at least can also play as a left back. Do you, what sort of role do you see her evolving into as a part of this? What is it as a starter? Is it as a game changer? What do you see? I think it's a bit too early. To be fair to her, it's the first coming back in so many years. And, and like she said herself, Tony, I'm just happy to be back in. There's no expectations. Just be back in, meeting the girls, training, and then we'll take it from there. So what we said, let's take one camp, and then we're going to have a meeting afterwards and see how she feels, where are she in, in, in her football. Um, if I look at what she can give to the team already now, she's shown in this camp how much she means for the young players. You should see her at the hotel and in, on the training field, whether she talks to Kara Kuna Cross. And, and I'm going to be honest, one of the reasons why Kara Kuna Cross is where she is now is what Cake is, is doing with her in Hammerby on a daily basis. Her being a role model, coaching, demanding, setting standard, but also give it a you know, high five when it needs to be supporting. Like She is part of where that player is. So I think Cake can, can play a massive role for this team. And similar to what we talked about when I was coaching Amber Warren back in 2015, you can lead from the bench as well. And she has shown that in this camp that she can have a massive impact on the team even if, even if she doesn't play. Because she's going to be playing just, at Sorry, games. we've it's, got, it's, sorry. It's, it's okay, I'll finish? take that last okay. one and then, yeah. Okay, because she's going to be returning here to start with Melbourne Victory. Will you be in discussions with Jeff about what sort of role she plays with Victory? No, that's all up to Jeff. And first of all, I, I visit Jeff this week. What a work he's doing. Oh, like, what a phenomenal, not just coach, but a person, what he does with play development. So I'll just say, hey, you know what you do, what you do with KK, and I know it's going to be good stuff. Fabulous. And final question to Isabel. I guess there has been a lot of outside noise about bringing in some of those players like that haven't had those minutes, and you spoke about how important those minutes are in club land. Um, I guess from the outside, you spoke about how good it is for them, the impact that they have just off the field and on the field with those younger players. Can you kind of talk a bit about that and, and why it's so important to, to have those decisions? Yeah, I, I want to be clear though, the only player in this camp that is injured and not available for selection is Alana. Uh, I mean, KK and Chloe has, you know, they're, they're training fully and they're there. I, I think it's, it's always having, first of all, you need to select on performance, but you also need to, what I talked about earlier here, it's not just about the best players, it's about the best team. And you need to have that balance between experience and youth. Um, you know, I called Ivy out of retirement and, and asked, can you come back? Why? Because first of all, she's a good footballer. Just look at how she's played as a centre-back in, in Beko Hecken in the top top team in Dalmas Svensk, and she's been phenomenal. So performance-wise, she has the football skills, but also how much she gives the young players as a role model. And I think these young players coming in, they 
need those players. It's not just about a coach teaching them what it's about, because it's a certain culture in the Matilda as well with professionalism, you know, the never say die attitude and all that. So you have to have that balance. Doesn't mean they guarantee the spot come World Cup 23. That's where the competition comes in.